In this video, I'm going to break down my 2023 crypto portfolio. I will show you how I structure my portfolio and which projects I'm holding and accumulating. It is so important that you watch this whole video. I know you guys like to skip around, but there are so many details here that if you miss one part, the rest might not make sense. So watch this from beginning to end, no skipping. And one final thing before we start, I'm not a financial advisor, guys. I'm talking about how I structure my personal crypto portfolio. This is not investment advice. It's educational. If you want investment advice, please speak to a registered financial advisor. I've always said the strategy that takes you from 1,000 to 1 million is not the same strategy that takes you from 1 million to 10 million. In my personal experience, when I had very little capital, it made sense to take more risks to build that capital up. Now that I have a lot more capital, it makes sense to try to be more conservative while still trying to build. And that is exactly why my portfolio strategy is flexible. It can be extremely conservative or it can be extremely aggressive. And of course, it can be anything in between. So what's the difference? Simply put, aggressive is higher risk, higher return. And conservative is lower risk, lower return. When I first started out, I took a more aggressive approach because I wanted to build my capital quickly. I took more risk and eventually it worked out. So I got more rewards. These days, I'm moving that slider back down to conservative since the bull market hasn't really started and I don't want to take too much risk. When the bull market truly starts, which I think will be 2024 to 2025, I'm going to pop that slider up to somewhere in the middle. And if I didn't have much capital, I'd slide it up to aggressive. This portfolio strategy allows for that kind of flexibility. But this doesn't mean you should go aggressive if you don't have much capital. Just because I did, that doesn't mean you should. You decide for yourself how much risk you want to take. Every investor is different. Drop me a comment below and let me know if you're going for an aggressive approach or a conservative approach or something in between. This will help me make better content for you guys in the future. So please let me know. Anyway, let's break down this portfolio. Now, I didn't just make this portfolio strategy up. It's tried and tested by some of the greatest investors of all time. I've put my own twist on it and adapted it for crypto because it comes from the stock market. But this portfolio killed it in 2021. My portfolio is a combination of a barbell portfolio strategy and a core satellite portfolio strategy. Both strategies are used by top tier investment firms and investors. The barbell strategy is where you allocate a major portion of your portfolio to very low risk investments and another portion to high risk, high reward investments. There's little to no allocation in the moderate risk area. Commonly, it's a 50-50 split, but it can vary depending on your risk profile. More on this later. But because we are in crypto, we have low risk, medium risk, high risk, and then we have complete degeneracy. And I don't want to stay out of the degen plays completely. So I have a separate satellite portfolio for my degen plays. This takes from the core satellite portfolio strategy, which like the barbell is also used by investment firms and very successful investors. In my case, the barbell is my main portfolio and the satellite is my degen portfolio. From now on, I will simply refer to them as main and degen. So my main portfolio is split around 50-50 between low risk and high risk. My degen portfolio is around 10% of the size of my main portfolio and it's dedicated to degen plays. Now the flexibility here comes down to allocation. If I wanted to increase my risk and potential gains, I might make my degen portfolio 20% the size of my main portfolio. Or I might do a 40-60 split between low and high risk on my main portfolio. Or maybe even both. If I wanted lower risk, I could just not have a degen portfolio at all and do a 50-50 or even a 60-40 low-high split on my main portfolio. But there are some important rules that I follow. First, I never fund my degen portfolio by taking profit from my main portfolio. 
My DGEN portfolio is extremely high risk. If I lose on that portfolio and I replenish the funds from my main portfolio, then my main portfolio may as well be extremely high risk. If I lose big on my DGEN portfolio, I replenish it with funds from other streams of income. Second, I take profit regularly on my DGEN portfolio and put it into my main portfolio. DGEN plays a high risk. It only makes sense to take profit regularly and move it into my much, much safer portfolio. Third and most important, I only invest money I can afford to lose. So let's break down the actual portfolio structure and I will explain what I allocate to low risk, high risk and DGEN. One thing you'll need to understand, the percentages I have shared are how much I assign to each crypto in my portfolio. But for most cryptos, I haven't actually invested that amount yet because I'm still accumulating. So for example, I might assign 15% to BTC, but if I'm still accumulating, I might only have half of the assigned capital actually in BTC right now, and the other half still in stable. So the numbers that I'm about to share are how much I have assigned. I am still actively accumulating in 2023, so I haven't fully invested in most of these. Let's start with the low risk part of my main portfolio. There are two obvious ones here, Bitcoin and ETH, which account for a massive 30% of my entire main portfolio. In 2021, when I was growing, Bitcoin and ETH didn't represent 30%. Again, that is the flexibility of this strategy at play. The rest of the low risk section has NIA 4%, SOL 4%, ARB 4%, GMX 4% and GNS 4%. This has been slimmed down recently when I restructured my portfolio. For example, I pulled out of BNB because of the SEC crackdown and the uncertain future it has, and a few others like Metis and Matic. I still like the projects, but I had to slim down my portfolio. But this is by no means complete. As the bull run heats up, I am perfectly happy to sell some of my Bitcoin and maybe even some of my ETH to rotate into newer, lower risk alts like Venom, Starkware or Layer Zero, especially Layer 2s because I think they will be huge in the next bull run. We will need to see how those look closer to launch though. The goal of the low risk part of this portfolio is not to make ridiculous gains. I would be happy with an averaged out 5x return on all of these low risk plays. Take Sol as an example. A lot of people say to me, Sol will never reach its all time high again. I don't care. If Sol only gets halfway to its all time high this run, that is still a 5x return on a fairly low risk crypto. I'm happy with that. Okay. So let's talk about the high risk part of my main portfolio. Now, I don't want to offend any projects that make it into this part of the portfolio. They are high risk because they might have low caps or they might be really new or maybe they have a really interesting USP, but it hasn't taken off yet. They're still solid projects and if they weren't, they would not be in my main portfolio. They would be in my DGEN one. But a $10 million cap crypto is just inherently higher risk than say a $100 million cap. And a $100 million cap is higher risk than a $1 billion cap. And another thing about this part of my portfolio, most of it is unallocated right now. Why? Because I believe most of the projects that are gonna give us those crazy 50X, 100X, or even more pumps simply aren't out yet. This is stuff like Vayax and Narwhal, two perp decks is coming soon. They will be released throughout the rest of 2023 and into 2024. I'll be adding more projects to this part of my portfolio. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel and I will share these projects as they come out. Right now I have Corium 4%, Prop chain 4%, Ultra 3%, GND 2%, GMD 2%, and Carbon 2%. These percentages might seem low to you, and maybe for you they are, but if you have a $500 portfolio, 2% is not worth buying. You need to scale up or down based on your portfolio size. As I said, more projects will be added to this part of my portfolio as they are released. I'll keep you updated. So let's talk flexibility. 
Let's say that you are like I was in 2019 and you want to ramp up faster while taking on more risk. You might want to make your DGEN portfolio a little bigger. For me, it's 10% the size of my main portfolio. You could make it 20%, 30% or more. Remember though, this is hugely risky. If that's too risky for your tastes, you could lower the balance between your low risk and the high risk of your main portfolio. So you might go for a 30-70 low to high split. I'm playing it fairly safe personally, but depending on your risk appetite, you can change things up. Remember the risks though. So that wraps up my current portfolio. I review and potentially restructure my portfolio every three to four months, but I also remove cryptos from it that are underperforming as necessary, which is why it's really important you hit that subscribe button. Anytime I remove or add a project to my portfolio, I talk about it in a video. So subscribe and turn on those notifications. Until next time, guys, remember, trade smart, don't be a dumbass, and I will see you soon.